Hi, there is a huge variety of analog MQ gas sensors on the market. Today, we'll talk about MQ135. It is used in air quality control equipments for buildings and offices. It is suitable for detecting ammonia, nitric oxide, alcohol, benzene, smoke, carbon dioxide and many more dangerous gases. In this video, you'll learn details about MQ135, how to wire it to Arduino or compatible boards such as ESP8266. You'll learn how it works and you see three demonstrations for detecting flammable gases, smoke and alcohol. This is MQ135 gas sensor module. As you can see, MQ135 is mounted on top of a breakout board. This makes it easy to use. On the back on the breakout board, you can see that there are four pins, which are for analog output, digital output, ground and VCC. You need to connect VCC to five volts. You should use either analog or digital output. I highly recommend you for more accurate data to use the analog output. As you can see in the technical data sheet of MQ135, it is suitable for detecting ammonia, nitric oxide, alcohol, benzene, smoke and carbon dioxide. The circuit voltage works at 5 volts. At the same voltage is the heater voltage. The technical data sheet also reveals the typical sensitivity characteristic of the MQ135 sensor for several gases. It also shows the de typical dependency of the MQ135 gas sensor on temperature and humidity. It is important to note this when you're writing your source code and it's also a good idea to attach a temperature and humidity sensor along with MQ135. Also note that the sensitivity adjustment is very necessary in order to properly use MQ135. You need to calibrate it to make sure that it detects the dangerous gases which might appear in your environment. Ok, before we proceed, let's summarize. The advantage of MQ135 is that it is low cost and it's suitable for monitoring air quality. It is very popular in the maker community and you can find a lot of tutorials. The disadvantage is that it's not very accurate. It detects several dangerous gases, but it cannot tell you what exact concentration of the detected gas is present in the air. The other disadvantage is the need of calibration. Let's see how MQ135 works. Inside the sensor, there is a heater which works at stable 5 volts. There is also a sensing layer. When a dangerous gas is detected, the resistance of the sensing material changes and the conductivity increases. You can see this on the analog output of the sensor. The first time when you turn on MQ135, you need to do the burn-in procedure. This means that you should place it in a room with clean air for at least 24 hours. It's highly recommended to do it for 48 hours. After that, each time when you turn on again the sensor, you should wait for a few minutes for the heater to dry the air and to start providing accurate data. For the demonstrations in this video tutorial, I'm going to use Anavi gas detector. This is an open source hardware development board that I have designed using the free and open source software KiCad. The analog output range of MQ135 is between 0 and 5 volts. When you wire it to Arduino or Arduino compatible board, make sure the, that the analog digital converter that you are using is within the same range. Anavi gas detector is powered by ESP8266 which has an internal analog to digital converter. However, this analog to digital converter is sensitive within the range between 0 and 1 volts. In order to make it compatible with the MQ135 gas sensor and to get accurate results, I'm using voltage dividers to adjust the range of the sensor, which is between 0 and 5, to the range of the analog to digital converter on the ESP8266, 
which I have already mentioned is between 0 and 1. The voltage divider is super simple, it is just two resistors that I have placed on the printed circuit board. Anavi gas detector provides 5 volt power supply for the MQ gas sensor, which means it's compatible not only with MQ135 but other MQ sensors with the same operating voltage. To read data from MQ135 in an Arduino sketch, you should use the built in function unlock read. Anavi gas detector comes with a default open source software available in GitHub where you can see how you can read these values. I have prepared for you three scientific experiments to show you practical examples how MQ135 with Anavi gas detector helps you to monitor indoor air quality. The first experiment is about detecting flammable gases. These demonstrations are dangerous. If you decide to reproduce them, you are doing it at your own risk. I'm using a lighter which is pointed right in front of MQ135. As soon as I turn it on, the conductivity on the sensor rapidly increases. You can see this on the mini OLED display attached to Anavi gas detector. It is very important to know that in this use case, MQ135 is reacting not to the fire, but to the flammable gas coming out of the lighter. Over the time, as soon as I turn off the lighter, the air gets better and the conductivity decreases. The second demonstration is even more attractive. Let's see how MQ135 detects smoke. I'm lighting up a candle and putting a small piece of an old paper next to it. Soon a fire will be started. I'm placing a transparent bowl on top of the candle with the paper. With the lack of oxygen, the fire will stop. Inside the bowl, I have also put the MQ135 gas sensor. You can see how over the time, with the lack of oxygen within the bowl, the fire is stopping but there is a lot of smoke. The conductivity displayed on the OLED display attached to Anavi gas detector is increasing because MQ135 has detected the smoke coming out of the fire. The last demonstration is about detecting alcohol with MQ135. I'm spilling alcoholic drink next to the sensor. As you can see, the conductivity increases. It does not increase as rapidly as when the sensor reacts with flammable gases or smoke. Although for this demonstration I used Uzo, which is a Greek traditional alcoholic drink, I have to say that Anavi gas detector is an entirely open source project made in my hometown Plovdiv, Bulgaria. I promise that in the next video, if I have to detect alcohol, I'll be using a traditional Bulgarian drink such as Rakia. Once again, you see that as soon as the alcohol is away from the sensor, over the time, the values read from the sensor are getting back to normal and the indoor air quality is reported as good. I hope this video was interesting. If you like it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for more videos.